This is the first video in a multi-part series that demonstrates how to integrate the dialogue system for Unity, Quest Machine, and Love Hate. When we're done, the final setup will look like this. A dialogue system conversation will grant a Quest Machine quest. As you complete the quest, it will update Love Hate faction members. We'll also demonstrate how to update Love Hate faction members in conversations. We'll start in a project in which we've already imported the dialogue system, Love Hate, and Quest Machine. Since we'll be working in a 2D scene, we've also ticked the Physics 2D checkbox in the Dialogue System's Welcome window, not shown here. All three assets also work great in 3D. The next step is to import the integration packages. In Quest Machine's third-party support folder, import Dialogue System Support, and love-hate support. In love-hate's third-party support folder, import dialogue system support. To save time setting up a basic scene, we'll start with Quest Machine's demo scene. Let's save a copy as Tutorial. The scene is already set up with the Pixel Crusher's shared save system, but let's set up a scene transition manager while we're here. Add the scene fader canvas prefab to it. Then add a standard scene transition manager. Assign the scene fader canvas and set up leave scene to play the show animation and enter scene to play the hide animation. This will show and hide a black cover when changing scenes. You can also assign an intermediate loading scene if you want. Delete the Input Device Manager because we'll be adding a Dialog Manager prefab that already has this component. Set the Gameplay Canvas to be behind other UI canvases. We'll also delete some UIs that we don't need for this tutorial. Next, we'll set up the Quest Machine game object. Create a quest database and assign it to the Quest Machine game object. Now we'll add the Dialog System integration components. Add a Dialog System Quest Dialog UI component. This allows Quest Machine quests to kick off Dialog System conversations. This is covered in Quest Machine's separate Dialog System Integration tutorial. For this tutorial, we're going to go the opposite way, where we start a Dialog System conversation, and that conversation controls Quest Machine quests. Then add a Dialog System Quest Alert UI if you want to redirect Quest Machine alerts to the Dialog System's Dialog UI's alert panel. Now add the Dialog Manager prefab. and you can see that it has an input device manager. Add a Dialog System Quest Machine Bridge component. This gives the Dialog System access to Quest Machine's features. If you'll be procedurally generating quests, add a Dialog System Quest Generator Bridge. 
This allows procedurally generated quests to use dialog system conversations as described in Quest Machine's other dialog system integration video tutorial. For this tutorial series, we won't be procedurally generating quests. Next, create a dialog database. Define an actor for our quest giver and assign portrait images to the quest giver and the player. Let's write a quick little conversation to test our setup so far. In this tutorial, we'll set up the villager and get rid of the other NPCs. Go ahead and break the prefab connection since this villager will be set up differently from the demo. Add a dialog actor component so that we can associate this game object with the NPC in our dialog database. We're going to use the dialog system's interaction components, so get rid of the targetable. And reset the quest giver to give us a clean slate to set it up. If you want to record the quest giver's current state in saved games, set up the save settings section. Whenever you set up a saver component, remember to assign a unique key. To set up the villager for the dialog system's selector, add a usable component. Then add a dialog system trigger to start the conversation. Next, we'll set up the player. Add a dialog actor component. Then add a proximity selector. This is what we'll use to interact with the villager. Proximity selectors work with trigger colliders, and we conveniently already have one. We'll also want to disable player control during conversations, so add and set up a dialog system events component. We'll disable the player controller and the proximity selector. Finally, let's clean up the scene a little bit. We'll keep two orcs and get rid of all the other interactables. Before we go further, let's make sure that interaction is working. Great! 
The proximity selector and dialog system trigger appear to be set up fine. In the next video, we'll create a quest and control it from a dialog system conversation.